Welcome everyone. In this video I am tackling the challenge of dismantling my AC engine ready for overhaul. I had already removed the cylinder head some time ago. With the engine removed from the car I made a wooden trolley to mount the block. The next task was to remove the clutch and flywheel. These are not going to be reused. You have to slacken the nuts evenly as the spring load reduces and it comes off easily. With the flywheel prevented from rotating, the self-locking nuts can be slackened, then some gentle persuasion to get it free. Several of the starter teeth are damaged. Next task was to mount the engine on a stand. I was worried that the shallow threaded holes in the alloy block might not be strong enough, so I adjusted the mounting yoke so that it is above the crankshaft axis. Then I added a thick aluminium strip and bolted it to the engine. To be extra safe I made a plywood prop to go under the sump. The engine at this stage only weighs about 70 kilograms or 155 pounds. That cast alloy sump is heavier than it looks. Next, the oil gallery pipe work. Thank you. 
than the bearing caps. Needless to say, these were tight. The nuts and the two bolts are numbered, but they were not all in the right places. Those bearings had definitely seen better days. Out with the crankshaft and the timing chain. I wish all the dismantling was this easy. The tough parts are yet to come. Now for the cross shaft, the nut on the drive dog was very tight. This is the distributor drive. Now I can access the four slotted screws that secure the cross shaft assembly. These were very tight and ultimately needed some brute force with an impact screwdriver and three hours of patience.
I still could not remove the cross shaft because the brass drive dog was stuck on the shaft. The shaft end is tapered and has a wood rough key. The camera wasn't rolling when I finally heated the brass dog with a butane torch and whacked the shaft end. Time to clean up the distributor drive components. That end cover appears to be homemade along with a badly made and leaky gasket. The bearing caps have the nuts numbers as well as the bearing number stamped on. Now to the really difficult part, extracting the liners and head studs. I'll deal with the liners in part 2 of this video. The head studs go 6.5 inches deep into the alloy block, poking out underneath. The lower 2.25 inches of the stud is threaded, so that it is pointless heating and cooling the studs to aid removal. I gave them all a whack with a hammer and applied some aerocoil which has a reputation as the best penetrating oil available. I then used a stud extractor that grips the plain part of the stud it damages the studs, so it's only suitable if you are renewing them. I eventually got two studs removed and they had no rust or corrosion on them. It is the long thread that creates a lot of friction plus any carbon deposit from the oil. Removing the other 12 studs plus the liners is a challenge for part 2 of this video. Thanks for watching.